Hello folks, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the basic activities uh, that are performed in IDT. I'll open up my information design tool here. Go to the universe. Click on the uh, universe name. Over here you have the space where you can enter the description. This is the description that will be visible to the end users when they're creating a new report and they're browsing through the uh, different list of universes available. The description here will come up as help just below the name of the universe. Other than that you have a summary here which gives you a summary of number of folders and uh, various objects, queries and all those things that you have in your universe. Advanced tab is where you would go to if you have multiple data foundation and you wanted to change the underlying data foundation for your business layer. In parameters you could add, uh, there are these uh, the default parameters available and then you could add a, a few that you like. Uh, I'll give you one as an example here is let's say you always wanted to end your SQL with a particular clause. Let's say in case of uh, DB2 if you wanted to end it with a, with your, you could add that here and click on OK. I'm not going to do this because it's MS Access database that I have here. Query options. Here is where you would limit the size of your query and uh, the time and so on. Comments. Here is where you could enter comments uh, from a descript uh, from a developer standpoint. Uh, always a good idea to do it so as to uh, enter notes for the other developers, or even if it's just one developer working, it's always a good idea to keep entering some high-level notes here. Next, we have the data foundation. If you wanted to go ahead and edit your data foundation from here, you could go right here, edit data foundation. So if this brings you to the data foundation, you could also go to it by just double clicking here on the DFX file. In the data foundation, we're going to take a look at uh, changing the connection. Uh, you do not necessarily need to do this often, but uh, let me show you anyways. You go to the connection tab here and uh, you click on this option here that says change connection and if you had multiple connections you could select uh, another one if you like. The next thing here is going to be changing or refreshing the structure for your data foundation. Very often we come across changes in the database and uh, we'll take a quick look at how to reflect these changes in your data foundation. I have made some changes uh, to the sales fact table in the database. Here you see I have four columns, date ID, country ID, item ID and amount. In my database I went ahead and uh, added a few more columns. So if I go to design view in this MS Access database you'll see that I have uh, renamed the amount column to amount local, added a couple of columns called U amount USD and amount Euro. One other change that I did here is I went to the date dimension and uh, in the design view I changed the month to text. I mean it doesn't make sense ideally it should be number but just to demonstrate how to or how it will show up in the data foundation I have changed it to text. I added a new table. Uh, it's just a dummy table so we'll just show you how to insert new tables and uh, currency rate table. I've inserted a currency rate table here in my data foundation. It is not joined to any tables. Uh, again, it's for demonstration purpose. What I'm going to do is go ahead and delete my table from the database. Yes. Okay. I'm going to save my database. I'm going to close it. Okay. So going back to my data foundation in IDT, I'm going to go to Actions and click on refresh structure. It's going to say that it's missing the currency table since I deleted it. Next it's going to say that it's missing the amount column. What I actually had done is rename the amount column but from an IDT perspective it's going to say that it's missing the column. It's going to find these new columns. This is the column that I had renamed and two new columns that I had added. 
and here's the change on the date dim. It's saying that the current data type is integer and the new one's going to be varchar, which is fine. I'm going to say next and uh, I'm going to click on finish. So it's just going to go ahead and do all the changes right away uh, in the data foundation. You see it's removed the currency dim. Uh, the sales fact table, you can see all those new objects. Let's go ahead and uh, save this data foundation. Now I'll go to my universe and uh, let's see what's happened in the measures. Amount. If I double click on amount, you see it's got this unknown reference because it doesn't have the amount column anymore. Now, instead of creating a new column for amount and deleting, make this column or this object instead of, sorry, I meant instead of deleting the existing object and creating a new object, make sure you just go to the existing object and uh, just reference the new column that you added or the renamed column. So you go to, what's that? Sales fact and... Uh, Mount local and I'm going to say validate expressions valid okay so now I'm also going to rename this as amount local I could also uh, create one other column for the USD just click on it and drag it in here so I have amount USD I'm gonna turn it into a measure and uh, just put in some here. Okay, for uh, for euro, I'm just gonna copy this. So, Control C and Control V. Going here and renaming this. And this column also, I'm just going to rename. If I go to SQL Assistant and validate, it'll work fine. Say OK. So there now I have all my new objects and as mentioned previously why I mentioned uh, why I talked about not deleting objects is because if you have reports out there that are already using these objects uh, I mean it's the universe is already published to the repository and the reports are using these objects if you delete an object and recreate again there are chances that your report will mess up. So if your universe is always uh, if your universe is published, always remember not to delete objects. Do not also ideally use cut and paste. If you want to move around objects between folders, you know you just want to click on the object and then drag it over. Uh, try not to use cut and paste. So yeah, that's about refreshing the structure of your data foundation once changes in the database have been made. What's next here? Move objects here. Yeah. Move objects and copy paste objects. I mentioned that. Uh, I try to drag them around instead of using cut and paste. Change the view of tables. Uh, in the data foundation, you could change the way your tables are displayed. You see how in this particular table, for example, I'm displaying all the columns. I could change this to display only, let's say, the joints. Or I could, you know, this will display only the columns on which there is a join. Or I could change it to say, display a collapsed view, which will just show me the header. I could do this to all the tables. And uh, this is how it will show up. Display collapsed. Me personally, at a minimum, I like to keep at least the joints. Uh, or even the entire table, but that is the expanded view, unless the table is uh, too big. Okay, that's that about the display mode. What else? Uh, table or column values. You could uh, see the values in a table if you wanted by just right clicking on a table. Like you select the table, right click on it and say show table values and uh, it will right away show you all the values that are there in the table. You could do a quick filter by typing whatever you want it. China for example or let's say if I just type E it's going to show me all the rows where there is an E across any of the columns. Okay. And that's the filter. And what else? Zoom and zoom out. Uh, that's this uh, very uh, 
this visual functionality here where you could go down here and zoom in or zoom out your structure if you wanted to let's say if you have too many tables and if you wanted to see the entire structure you would just uh, make it appear smaller or if you had very few tables and you wanted to see the entire I mean all the table names properly and all that you could make it appear bigger uh, again this is just a visualization perspective for the developer next we have families so do you see how uh, my dimension table or my fact table here is white and the dimension tables here are blue this doesn't happen by default this happened because of uh, what is up here called families uh, I introduced families here uh, let me delete one and uh, and then I'll show you how to create it again let me actually go to the next step and then I'll come back to families the next step is about uh, derived tables more like a database view right click on the data foundation say insert derived table and uh, you would do let's say country let's do one on the country then for let's say EMEA countries only select star from country then where region name equal to AMEA and uh, let's validate this this looks good so what I'm gonna do is click on OK so now I have this country then and uh, if I show the table values I'm gonna see only the EMEA countries going back to the families let's go ahead and now create a new family for aliases or for derived tables so let's go in here click on edit families and I'm gonna add a new one and call it derived tables and let's say we want the table color to be now lavender just click on OK select the country or tables or derived tables uh, that you want the new family to be applied to and go to this drop down and say derived tables so now you know that gives it a color again a uh, uh, visual factor nothing that really changes from a developer standpoint create queries I mean in the universe going back to the universe uh, like how you create a report if you wanted you could create a quick query here you could say insert query and uh, let's say region name and uh, amount USD or let's just say amount local and uh, click on OK execute and uh, you could do a quick uh, take a quick look at the query or the values uh, that the query generates and uh, yeah, you will have this graph which will tell you you know how many distinct values are there for each uh, each of the objects in your query uh, well uh, that was a quick look at some of the very basic functionalities of uh, data foundation or sorry for IDT targeted towards someone who is uh, new to the tool or new to business objects hope that was helpful and uh, thank you very much for watching